Hello Two Stroke fans. Uh, this video is a continuation um, within a series. Uh, the first video I'll put a little link up to the top um, covering two stroke expansion chambers. Uh, first of all I'd just like to welcome uh, new subscribers to the channel and uh, thank you again to uh, Alex at uh, Two Stroke Stuffing YouTube channel. If you haven't seen that channel be sure to go to it. He does a lot of in-depth uh, two stroke stuff, scratch belt engines and uh, dyno work and some other very interesting experiments he's done as well. Uh, so thanks again. So we'll take this one from where we left off last time. Now what I said I was going to get into is the actual moment when the piston opens and we get the blow down and we get our first sonic pulse um, moving out of the uh, down, down the uh, exhaust pipe. And what I mentioned then is the, the timing point or the timing edge of when that begins is taken from the top of the piston and not from the top of the ring. Now I said I explained that in a little bit more detail. Um, in some circumstances you'll see like this uh, carting piston on the left here um, that has an L-shaped ring in it okay that conveniently has the L-shaped ring conveniently comes up very close to the top of the piston but in other ones you'll have a single piston ring and you'll have some distance in between. Now the amount of, of gas that can leak past that small um, area is not sufficient to trigger our our sonic pulse. Okay, um, and we see this in, and we see evidence of that in our power valve system, which um, what actually it, it's got a cylinder like this that's scalloped out that runs um, perpendicular to the exhaust port. The exhaust port runs down there, and as it closes over at lower speeds. It effectively lowers the top of the exhaust port, but it does not touch the piston. Okay, so it's not exactly sealing on the piston. Now that does two things at lower engine speeds by reducing the by lowering the exhaust port, we increase the trapped compression inside the inside the cylinder. But if we're complete, if we're actually changing the trapped compression, what we're also doing is changing the exhaust timing edge. So essentially, the edge will be taken from when the top of the piston um, reaches the top of the port, not the ring, um, for the same reasons that, that the power valve system works. This is not the only type, but just to give you an example. And uh, that timing edge will become important when we talk about the tuned length of the expansion chambers because the, in, in calculating the tuned length of where these cones are supposed to be in relationship to the exhaust port, that will be determined by the exhaust port timing in degrees. In the previous video, um, I was referring to the uh, primary sonic wave of a positive pressure sign and a sonic wave of a negative pressure sign. Okay, that's a standard description of them um, taken out of a very early published book about uh, two stroke tuning and expansion chambers written by Gordon Jennings. Um, it's fairly simplistic, um, but they are better described. Uh, where this uh, sonic wave is described as a compression wave and this negative sonic wave is described as an expansion wave. So they're more or less the same thing but they're opposite. This one's the suction and this one's the compression wave. Now the same effect that occurs in the expansion chamber also occurs on the intake side. Um, but on the intake side we reverse that around. So when the port opens on the intake side we get an expansion wave traveling all the way out of the carburetor and when it reaches the open end of the carburetor like this uh, we get a reflected compression wave running back towards the inlet port but that's tuned intake length we're not going to get into that we're going to stick with expansion chambers at the moment so we have a compression wave and we have an expansion wave now in the previous video I also said that the sonic velocity of those waves is not affected by the gas okay now that's, that's not totally true, but it's important to distinguish the difference between uh, the sonic wave velocity, the acoustic wave velocity, and the gas velocity. Okay, they're not just they're not the same thing, and you can't treat them as the same thing. Um, now, I measured before the wave velocity in an ocean where the uh, where the water's standing still, the wave moves through the ocean, not the whole ocean moving. Um, but if you then have a waveform similar to that in a river that's actually flowing, then the entire waveform will flow at the, at the sonic speed, 
at the sonic velocity, but it will also move in addition to the speed that their whole river is flowing down because the wave doesn't know how fast the banks are going past it. It only knows how fast the, the mass of uh, water that it's in. So, but fortunately, with two strokes, is each wave travels all the way down to the diffuser and back again to the point that it emanated. Likewise, in the expansion chamber baffle cone, it travels all the way down to the baffle cone and back again. So as much as it is aided or increased in speed going one way, it's, it's, it's slowed down in speed going the other way. So essentially the round trip is pretty close to, um, pretty close to right. Um, we don't have to factor that in too much unless we want to get into some um, uh, more serious levels of stuff, which is involved in um, a later work in the 90s by um, Gordon Blair, but um, it gets, I'm not going to do a, a Gordon Blair on you because um, that article is as in depth as it is, is also sleep inducing. So we've got to keep it, trying to keep it simple so that we can get straight to the meat and potatoes and you have an understanding of how the expansion chamber works, what tune lengths are, and how to measure them. So the purpose of that is, is that if you just want to take expansion chambers from a perspective that you've got an engine, and you want more power, okay, but you're not, you know, you don't want to obsess over the most power, you just want more power. And in my experience, most people just want more power. I've never heard anyone say, look, I want the most power I can get, or I don't want any extra at all. So we're going to concentrate on you being able to assess whether the pipe you've got on it is working, and to be able to make a number of uh, basic measurements to assess whether the pipe needs modification, or whether you need a different type of pipe to suit. Um, so I want to keep the information useful. Uh, having uh, spoken about compression and expansion waves and how the uh, sonic wave moves ahead of the gas, what we've got here is some images. Uh, again, this is out of Blair's works, um, and this is Schlieren photography. But for now, uh, we'll get into the Schlieren photography in the next video tomorrow. For videos, I'll try to do uh, two videos on the weekends once a week, and tomorrow we'll get into this and we'll show you the actual waveforms, the compression wave, and the gases, etc., and discuss that. Um, but uh, yeah, we can't go too long, and we'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye now.